Well, good evening. It's time again for our midweek devotional. And as we are going through these Wednesdays in the season of Lent, we come with a time of reflection. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, as we look to the events of our lives, as we look to the situations we find ourselves in, the journeys that we are on, and the paths that we have gone. Help us, Lord, to identify those things in which we have stumbled, in which we have erred, that we humbly seek your forgiveness, we seek your healing. We ask, Lord, that you hold not our sins and our trespasses against us, but guide us in your way, recreate in us a clean heart, and in this holy season, allow us to remember and focus on what Jesus Christ has done for us. That he has delivered us unto you, pure and holy, not by our own works, but by your grace and mercy. We pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. And amen. Well, today's passage, I'm going to focus um, from the prophet Isaiah. I'm going to read from the 33rd chapter, verses 13 through 22. Let's hear now what Isaiah writes. Hear, you who are far away, what I have done. And you who are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners of Zion are afraid. Trembling has seized the godless. Who among us can live with the devouring fire? Who among us can live with the everlasting flames? Those who walk righteously and speak uprightly, who despise the gain of oppression, who wave away the bride instead of accepting it, who stop their ears from hearing of bloodshed, who shut their eyes from looking on evil. They will live on the heights. Their refuge will be the fortress of the rocks. Their food will be supplied, their water assured. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will behold a land that stretches far away. Your mind will muse on the terror. Where is the one who counted? Where is the one who weighed the tribute? Where is the one who counted the towers? No longer will you see the insolent people, the people of an obscure speech that you cannot comprehend, a stammering in a language that you cannot understand. Look on Zion, the city of your appointed festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, an immovable tent, whose stakes shall never be pulled up, and none of whose ropes will be broken. But the Lord in majesty will be for us a place of broad rivers and streams, where no galley with oars can go or no stately ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our ruler. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Amen and amen. Now, as I've mentioned several times, that Lent is a time of reflection, a time for us to take stock of where we're at, what we're doing, what we hold important. What are the things in our lives that drive us and guide us? Are they righteous or are they of the world? Are they holy or are they plain? Are they things that lead to the eternal are they part of this mortal coil that we have it? Well, it is good to reflect on that. It is good for us to remember th the sins that we have committed. The sinful nature that sometimes controls us and drives us. Those things in our lives that are not healthy or wholesome. Those things that do not remind us of whose we are and who we belong to. Those distractions. And to say, take stock of all of that and to ask God to forgive our sins and transgressions. To ask God to guide us in his way. To remind us who we belong to. Whose image it is that we were created in. And that we might live up to that creation. But with all that reflection, sometimes we can get too absorbed in it. We can sometimes start to feel unworthy. We can start to really focus on the negative and go into a downward spiral. And that's not what I'm encouraging. 
That's not what I, I, I recommend. Yes, it is important to take stock. But to balance that with the reminder that while we have fallen short of God's glory, God never falls short of his promises. While we do not do all that we should and we do not keep his commandments perfectly, that God is a perfect God, a holy God, one who completes everything that he sets out to do. His plan and his will are always fulfilled in his time according to his nature. And so, while we reflect on how we might improve ourselves or remove ourselves from negative influences, we should always remember that our God is with us. He is on our side. And as the prophet Isaiah writes about today, he talks about that idea of judgment. You know, those who take tribute, those who oppress, those who do these things which are negative, and there is a punishment, a judgment that is in place. But we are reminded, just as the Israelites were the children of Zion, we too are children of Zion. We are God's chosen people. We are his redeemed, his beloved. And though we are not perfect and though we cannot earn it ourselves, we can rely on the good gifts and the mercy and the grace that God offers us. We can remember this time what Christ did for us. When he turned his face to Jerusalem, when he began the last portion of his journey, his walk to persecution and derision, to rejection, and ultimately to crucifixion. He did that because God is holy and God's judgment is sure. But he took that judgment for us upon himself. And so while it is good to reflect on where we have been, it is also important that we hold on to what Christ has done. For he went to the cross willingly on our behalf. He went there to remove our sin, to enable us to live our lives free from the judgment of the law into the grace and the mercy of God's kingdom. So I encourage you <clears throat> to, with all sincerity and humility, to remember and look at those things in your life which aren't healthy, aren't beneficial, aren't glorifying to God, and let us remove those, let us move past those. But let us be assured that our God will be with us in that movement. Our God will help take away those things that tempt us, those things that discourage us, those things that bring us not to the place where we should be, but to an abrupt halt outside of the kingdom. And remember that God calls us and beckons us to come in and has opened the door through Christ Jesus. And with Isaiah, let us remember and focus on these last words that I read. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our ruler. And the Lord is our king. And he will save us. Friends, I hope you take some encouragement from this. That no matter what life seems to throw at you, no matter how scary things get, no matter what the odds seem to be against us, if God is for us, then nothing can stand in that way. Now that doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect. Not at least on this side of God's kingdom. But everything is working towards that perfection. Through what Christ Jesus has done, what he is doing, and what he shall do at the end of times. Calling each of us home, beckoning us to come into the kingdom. To glorify God. To live in praise of he who created us, who redeemed us, and who sustains us. Be encouraged this week. Trust in all that God is doing. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we read the words from your prophets, we take hope. We are encouraged by your steadfast love, by the knowledge that you are firmly in control of our lives and of our world, even though at times it seems to be a world of chaos, of division, of destruction. 
But none of these things are eternal. They are all temporary. You only are eternal. And you call us into your eternal home. And so, Lord, we ask that you would fill us with your spirit, that we may focus on Christ Jesus, our Lord, and the life that he lived, the teachings that he gave, and ultimately the acts that he performed on our behalf, redeeming all of us sinners, not because we deserve, but because it was your will. We pray this in all things in Christ's holy and precious name. Amen and amen. Well, have a blessed week, and we will see you Sunday or next week. God bless.